I'm making this video because I realized that there is not a really specific video like this either from Kenny or from Reaper Blog. So <clears throat> whenever you're trying to export a multi-track after you're done recording or finishing the final touches for a mix, there's an easy way to render everything properly named in Reaper that's called the Render Region Matrix. And I'm going to talk about that today. Straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and let's get into it. So I have this small session that I recorded, a small live session here in the studio, and it's just vocals and two guitar tracks, that's all. Let's suppose for a moment that I want to export take one, take two, take three, four, five, and six, okay? Because I recorded everything in a straight line. I could line up everything for editing, but that's a different video because otherwise it will be too long. So I'm going to take advantage of the render to file window where we are going to use the wildcards. There are videos on this. The wildcards are some variables that take the name of something within the project. So for example, if I want to export a file that's called the same name as this track that's being selected, I could go into the source, select a track stems, uh, during a time selection, let's suppose this region right here, and go into wildcards, and instead of having the author and the title, I will select and take the track name. It's right here. This would export a file called box. If I select the next one, it's going to change to guitar DI. If I select this one, it's going to export a file that's called guitar mic. And that's really, really helpful. I like this way of exporting stuff, but I feel it's much more efficient to use the region render matrix. And I don't do it via master. I know there's there, that's part of an update that we had on Reaper, but it's pretty much the same thing. I'm not going to get into details. Either way, it should work for these specific video purposes. So first of all, if I'm exporting different takes, or if you're exporting only one single track, that's from here to here. Remember, you have to go into your action list, insert region from time selection. I have it assigned to comment R, and it will be this region. I could rename this as full song. I will set it to a random color, so it's just visually easy to separate. But I already have different takes right here. And I know the length of those is kind of working. So the only thing that I will do is instead of fiddling around and cutting everything up because this is not necessarily the, ed the editing session, I will just go again into the render to file, region matrix. This window can be docked if you want it to be. And here, what you will select is if you want to export or render the master mix, that's only what's coming out through this stereo out all tracks in this region. So this selects instantly all of the tracks inside of the project, or you can just select a couple of tracks within this region or time selection. And you do that for every single one of them. So I want to select all tracks. You can just click and drag. So I can name my files properly. I will take advantage of the region manager. I can open it right there. And I know that region one is take one. I'll hit tab to move into the next Region, take two, I will copy, take three, take four, take five, take six. And for naming my files that are going to be exported, that are the ones right here, I'm going to use what I think usually works best. It's going to be first track number. That way I will keep this order of the files, hit space, project, track. That's the name of the track that's being selected. Hit space, then I'm going to use author, and then I'm going to use title. Author and title appear in the project settings. So whenever I open my project settings, I can change on the note section, the name of the authors and the title, let's call it live session. I will go back to the export window. If you want to export all of these as mono because they are only mono files, you would have to have selected this option, tracks with only mono media to mono files. Since those media items are mono, they will export themselves as mono. And multi-channel tracks to multi-channel files. That way it's going to keep co coherence among the files that you're using across your production. A couple of other adjustments, adjustments that I suggest you to do. I know nothing here is picking, but I usually have the brick wall limiter to true pick 
to minus 0.5. This is because I just want some small protection in case something jumps. I'm going to add a really small fade in and fade out of 15 milliseconds. This kind of fade in is fine. It's just to avoid any clicks at the beginning of the file. I haven't cut my files properly. A really important setting is the wave bit depth because not every single DAW accept 32-bit files PCM. Uh, I made a small render of two files, PCM versus floating point. I have them right here and I'm on Ableton Live, right? So whenever I try to import the floating point 32-bit, it lets me drag it into the session. And that's great. But whenever I try to import the PCM version, it's simply not going to let me do it. So some DOS are like that. Reaper has a lot of flexibility to read any kind of file. So please remember that you have to export 32-bit floating points uh, just to protect yourself from this headroom distortion that might happen for some reason. If you export to 24-bit, it's fine as well. It works. Uh, we can make another video on Dither uh, that's only used when you're lowering the bit depth of your files, and that's usually only used in mastering stage. Again, a small checklist is file name, track number, track author, title. You can give some spaces, underscores, or whatever things you use. I will also add the wildcard region because that will add take one and then the track number and track name. I usually like to add the tempo as well, but since this is completely free, it doesn't, it's not attached to a click, so this doesn't need a tempo. If that was the case, you can include the tempo information here by embedding the tempo. And that's pretty much all you need. So as you can see, it's going to render 30 files and it's going to seem like a lot, but let's do the math. You have one, two, three actual tracks from the recording times six, that's 18. And I'm adding 12 more because I have a small delay and a small reverb. Because I was already processing a bit while I was recording just to have a better reference for the artist. It's not going to take a long time. I'll bypass uh, also the effects at the stereo out so they don't affect the multitrack that I'm generating from this. And remember that your multitrack will follow these fader positions. So this will be lower, this will be higher, this will be lower, this will be higher. You have two options. If you're rendering like this, since you're working with a higher bit depth, 32 bit, you can raise a clip gain after that and you won't have any noise uh, that you're bringing up that you don't need. If you're not sure if it's way too low, you could use the extensions as snapshots and take a snapshot of this mixer of the full track mix, save it as full mix, run an action called set volume of selected tracks to zero. This is going to reset all of your mixer in case you have a bigger session. If not, you can just double click every single fader and that's going to bring them back to zero. And you can't select all of your tracks and just double click it because they're going to move relatively up. So that's not going to work. So let's do it like this. If you're not sure if your levels will be peaking way too much, you could also take a small extra space and lower all of your faders to minus six. And now whenever I export all of my 30 files and I have this extra protection up top, as you can see, everything is going to be properly named and it's not going to take a long time. It says remaining five minutes, but it's going really fast. Also, as you can see, it's going to export the delay machine track as four channels because I have a side chain going into it. So channels one and two will be the delays, three and four will be the side chain input. Same thing as the lexicon reverb. So as you can see, every single file has been rendered and now when I hit open folder, everything is properly organized. And whenever I try to take this into a new Reaper session just for mixing, I could import them all at same time position on separate tracks. And this is all take one, take two, etc., etc. If you don't want to export the effect because you haven't edited yet, you can just look for the action, copy effects chain from selected track. And this lets you paste the effects on another project inside Reaper. So you can just look for the paste effects chain from selected track. I have that on a keyboard shortcut. For you to group everything for comping or editing, you just want to double hit any track 
And you can then just use the action implode items on same track into takes for every single track. So whenever you have everything bounced down and, and set up like this in comps, remember that you first need to group your tracks. In this case, it's the set track grouping parameters. And I have to link these two tracks because those are the same guitar with the media racer lead and media racer edit follow. That way, whenever I set up the comp swipe edit for one, it will set it up for both of them as you can see, and I can edit the voice a little bit apart. If sometimes the timing is not the best, I will have to use the same take and try to make the best out of it. But once I'm done with whatever editing I might need, you just right click show play only lane. And now you can start discarding the rest. You can also lock the takes. Remember that you can lock the takes and now there's nothing you can do to switch them. You could discard the rest of the lanes and takes, so you can just start mixing with this, or you can do a save us where you discard everything, whatever uh, you find best for your own practices and workflow. If you like this kind of videos, I have a small link in the description so I can get a small kickback for all the videos that I've been making. And you can see that most of my videos are now starting to intertwine one another, because from here you can start adding stretch markers and I have a video on that and how to use them, some mentality for time editing, uh, how to record the recording modes, how to record the live session. And I'm trying to build like this small guide for most people to get some better practices and just be a lot more efficient with, with their work. And because I know many of you are trying to make uh, this a bit more professional. If you like this kind of videos, be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and not only Mike likes coffee, I have a link in my description description as well if you want to give something back to the channel. And straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis and thanks for listening.